there you are. Perfect. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to have you here. So wonderful to be here. So for those of you who are not familiar with Aaron Pine, the Elven Wizard, let me introduce him. Okay, I think you have a, a big bio, but I am going to do justice to <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's okay. I want to do the whole thing for you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I want to make sure it's it's pine, right? Like the tree. Yeah, like the okay. tree, exactly. Yes, okay. Aaron Pine, the Elven Wizard, is an accomplished and unique spiritual teacher, multidimensional channel, healer, visionary artist, light language activator, spiritual web and graphic designer, mead ceremony guide, magical practitioner and seer he's a straight up wizard um he has a tedx talk entitled a message from the trees um and his art and writing have been in worldwide publications since his childhood he has been helping bridge the human experience and you know the human experience and spiritual dimensions to help individuals remember their connection to the sacred at the age of 18 he began his training in many different spiritual traditions and energy healing techniques. From there, he has developed many unique styles of meditation and personal transformation. And this part is really cool, everyone. Uh, since 2020, he's been building the world's first ever immersive audio guided meditation fantasy themed game called inner realms journey for adults and kids um so on the website and app users are taking on an exciting adventure listening to um well listening to create and embody their avatar we're going to talk a little bit about this today um their avatar also known as their mythical self so this is a growing library of audio journeys that takes you on magical adventures to different realms in the tree of life. Um, so I, I think that is a really good introduction to you. I have so many questions that I like want to just dive right into Let's that. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cause you know, I, it was so funny. Some people, I just like, was like I'm going to wing it. And with you, I was like, oh my God, there's so much magic. I have to be more organized. Um, but so. Okay, question number one. Yeah. Uh, what does being a wizard mean to you? What mm. is elven wizardry and elven magic? Nice, love it. Well, thank you for having me. It's it's an honor to be here with everyone and just uh, grateful to share and connect and open these portals of magic with all of you today and, and beyond in the days ahead. Uh, so wizardry to me is, it's the, it's the concept of magic and being attuned to magic and bringing that forth. It's always sort of been there in my life, even though I didn't always have a, a framework of what that was. Um, but then the concept of wizard and elven wizardry is that connection to nature itself and letting uh, myself expand beyond just my human story into this multidimensional interconnected being that I am and then letting all those forces flow through me, right? Uh, a wizard to me is connected to all the realms of spirit and the dragons and the fairies and the elves and the trees and the mountains and the universe. And I let that flow through me. And that's what empowers all my creations and my offerings and, and my uh, quest in this world is to help people open up to that magic. Um, and so I've really stepped into embodying that. How can I be kind of every day I wake up, how can I wizard even more than I wizarded before? Uh, how much wizarding can I wizard everywhere I go? So it's bringing forth that magic and living that everywhere I go. And I've seen how much that inspires and gives permission for others to live their magic. And that elvish connection for me is the connection with the trees. I love the trees. I love being a forest. That's my my recharge. Um, I'm blessed to be up here right now in Washington State where there's some magical forest up here, Mossy Forest. So that's like the, that's my home <laughs> is the forest. And the elves is that connection to nature. They're like the, uh, the angels of the forest. I kind of see them as. I love that. I've never heard them described before as the angels of the forest. That's mm, really, mm. I also want to comment on your dragon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is Freya. She's oh. uh, slowly becoming more famous than me. <laughs> I was noticing her. I was like, I was like, I'm listening to you. What's happening over there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do other lives and, and classes and stuff. And, you know, so my students are like, hey, it's Freya. And I'm like, what about me? <laughs> They're on the I know. dragon. Okay, yeah. I'm I got very excited. I was like, like I say uh, she's my assistant, but I think I'm really her assistant. She's really doing all the work. <laughs> okay. Well, I think you are showing up true to form. You got the hat and everything. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. My wizard hat, gloves, all the magic. <laughs> yes. And I just love that because you're just talking about the embodiment of the magic. Mm, and I yeah. really think that's what you're bringing here today. Yeah. So my next question, this is more of like, you know, asking about your personal journey. Can you tell us about your journey 
yeah. to discovering the path of magic. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of always been there. Uh, you know, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the suburbs. Nobody around me was per se magical. My parents were really into it or anything like that. Um, but I remember in, in elementary school drawing these geometric mandalas with all these symbols and glyphs in them. I didn't consciously know what it was. It was just like all of my papers. I was still paying attention. I still was pretty much straight A student, but it was just like they were just pouring through me. Uh, and then I got into castles and then like sixth grade, you know, superheroes and found out about fantasy and dragons and Dungeons and Dragons and just was like, yes, and was just drawing those and just into it and reading books and um, just it was just there. Uh, and then like studying medieval history and mythology, it was just kind of this this deep passion, even though it wasn't again, nobody around me was into that. Um, and then when I was about 17, I found, I discovered metaphysical things, astrology and tarot and Kabbalah. And I was like, oh my gosh, where has this been all my life? And just started diving into it. And then right around that time, I happened to find a flyer for a psychic festival in Cincinnati. That's, it's still going on this festival. And, uh, so I was like, oh, this looks cool. So I went to it and got readings from different psychics. And I got five different readings and every psychic touched on things. I was thinking about college and stuff like that. But they were like, you're a master at this stuff. You've done this in all your past lives. Like, this is your thing. And and I was kind of like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what's going on here? Right. And uh, the last one, uh, the last psychic told me the same thing. Uh, she also said she saw a dragon around me. So I was like, OK, this this lady's on it. And then she was like, I'm teaching these classes on connecting to your spirit guides and some basic energy stuff. Um, so and that started right about when I turned 18. So I took this class and I went in there uh, again in Cincinnati. I was this young 18 year old guy with all these women and they're probably 50s and 60s. And I was kind of like, what am I doing in here? Um, but she would take us on these guided journeys and just so much came through. And I would see all the spirit beings and they're like starting to tell me all this information. And it just was like, ah, oh, yes, this is this is who I am. And I just continued on my studies and healing and meditation and all, you know anything I could find at that point. And very quickly started doing offering healing sessions, teaching meditation. Um, I also started doing digital artwork uh, around that same time using Photoshop. And it became a way for me to sort of like express what I was seeing and sort of process and put it together. Um, and then people started being like, oh, these are amazing. And, and so I just continued to expand my artwork and offering the artwork and the artwork as a way for me to also explain. Uh, they're like teaching aids to explain our connection to these other dimensions or explain how geom sacred geometry worked or explained how, you know, these spirit beings worked and connected to us. Um, so just continue to open up from there on through my twenties and into my thirties here. I love that. Now, cause I think that sometimes it's hard to describe magic through words, mm -hmm. but I think you see an image, there's like an instant transmission. Yeah. Yeah. So, totally. I, love that. <laughs> uh, I also love that you said that even when you were like a kid, you're like, I'm drawing all these mandalas. I don't know what they mean. You're right. them. <laughs> They're just coming through. <laughs> yes. I love that. And, um, I also, um, I wanted, I had something I was going to reflect back, but my mm -hmm. brain is I'm just, I have my next question buzzing at the tip of my tongue. So, okay, we're just going full, full, full. <laughs> Um, I'm just, I'm just really just so excited that you are here. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just, I'm really honoring you as that master of magic. I think that's, what's really coming through is cause mm -hmm. I can feel that it's mm -hmm. like, I feel that. And, um, okay. So I want to really tap into the sacred wisdom that you are here to bring today. And one of the things that you said, and this, I, you know, before this, I was like, I'm going to go to his website. I'm going to like <laughs> come up with some salient questions. And I saw that you said something that really intrigued me. And you mm. said on your website that most professions have their origins in magical practices. Mm. And you went so far as to say that science, finance, law, art, all of these come from magic. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you can explain that um, sure. more with us today. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I've done a lot of like studies into magic and the history of magic. And, you know, it was prevalent, like everywhere, every culture around the world was magical. They each had their own sort of traditions and forms of that. And then, of course, over the last couple thousand years, that's been suppressed and, and, and tucked away. But, um, you know, going back very far, Paleolithic, if you will, right? everything was magical to them. There was this magical world and they used art and, you know, began using sound and different things to connect with and understand the forces of nature and the spiritual realms that they were aware of uh, over time, right? That evolved into structuring reality, right? Law, um, society, government, uh, medicine, right? All these things developed out of trying to understand the forces of life and each other and our relationship and then started 
putting them into formats. If you're doing a magical spell or ritual, right, you're tapping into emotions, energy, the spiritual realms, uh, your insights, you're using symbolic patterns, right? Whether it's you use crystals or you draw out a symbol or you, you know, mix some magical ingredients together in your culture and you're accessing different forces and energies and putting them into a structure to create a desired result. Art's the same thing. You have this inspiration, you have this inner passion. So you draw forth your markers or your paint or your canvas and you put together and it's a, it becomes a ritual even if you don't know that you're you're formatting energy into a structured form with an intention and then that gets you know becomes physicalized if you're doing law you know you're like okay here's different things happening in the world here's what people are doing and maybe isn't ideal for society to grow so you start to formulate these structures and you write a spell and your your laws <laughs> of this is what you can do and can't do and if you do this you're gonna this is gonna happen right you form this ritual and structure and it gets repeated over and over again right and maybe it gets evolves that's ritual science comes from ancient alchemy which was all about understanding you know the composition of forms and spirit and how spirit moves into form and how can we change form and what are all these different components in the world around us right um you know i was researching there's some very there's a lot of ancient spells out there that'd be super weird to us today like dog's blood and urine from this and all kinds of crazy stuff that most of us probably wouldn't want to touch but it was like they they didn't have the same uh you know thoughts around those things as we do and they were just like oh these are just parts of nature that are around us and and there's properties and spirit within all of it so let's weave it together and if we put this with this what's gonna it's gonna change into that so that all these things were there for thousands of years and evolved into you know what we have now is law and government and science and all sorts of things were inspired by humanity, like understanding our relationship to this world around us and seeing how we can manipulate it for our own desires <laughs> and, and growth and evolution. Yeah, no, I love that. I really feel like what you're describing is magic as really the foundation of civilization. Yeah. Magic is the foundation of <laughs> That's reality. it. That's it. <laughs> and it's funny, the person who was on, um, like two people before you, uh, as she was talking, we were talking about magical storytelling and how really mm. like storytelling and magic have been one since Huge. the dawn of time. That's it. And I just think it's really interesting because I think the world at large, the most people who walk around in the world they wouldn't see law as magical. They wouldn't see finance as magical. <laughs> right. And it's like mind blowing. And that's why I really feel that I can I experience your mastery because I feel like being in your presence, there's like a timelessness. Um, so you're describing like, you know, like even though we're in this now moment, when you right. describe that, it's almost like, I feel like you just kind of opened, like opened this portal back in time. Uh, yeah. I really could feel that foundational presence of magic mm. really like here in this moment now mm. in a way I could before we started this conversation. Mm, amazing. I love that. Yeah. I've been around here for a long time. <laughs> yes. Let me reflect that back. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, and yeah. I, I, I wanted, wanted, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Add in too, real quick, with the finances and money and numbers, right? That all comes from ancient, a lot from Greece and, and other cultures. They all have their math and understanding of math as or uh, organizing nature and the principles of nature and the patterns of nature. And that's you know, created geometry and all these mathematical principles. And a lot of those ancient math schools had this connection to magic and the mystery and the gods, right? So it's, it's everywhere. Beautiful. So I'm going to pick your brain here. So my next question is about spells. Oh, yeah. Um, so can you ask, uh, you know, sorry, can you talk um, a little about the true nature of spell work and spells in general? What are they and why are they so powerful? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Well, spells are, right taking this sort of um space energy time to create change in yourself and, and from there the world around you so right our world our external world is reflecting what's going on within us and oftentimes right there's something we want to change we're, we're not happy with with our job or partnership or whatever in the world so the spells of time to to gather the elements, the energy, the emotions, the desires, uh, the, the forces of nature to shift what's inside of you, right? And I want to really uh, highlight that shift what's inside of you is very powerful. You know, there's a lot of ideas of spells of like, oh, I want to control somebody or manipulate somebody. That kind of creates a loop where you're bonded to this other person. I've had to help a lot of clients like unravel that stuff where they're kind of like entwined with others. 
my idea, my suggestion is to use a spell to make transformations within your own consciousness, because that's where the real power is. That's where the real magic is within you. And you get to discover how to bring forth your magic. Spells are a way for you to discover the magical formulations within you. Now, right, there's all sorts of beautiful traditions around the world. Uh, I, of course, love like Norse and Celtic, but I've, you know, I've studied a bit of Egyptian, the, the wonderful presenter was sharing some Egyptian magic. I got to witness a little bit of Mayans, you know, there's all these different traditions. I invite you to draw upon those ones that you connect with that are really feel powerful to you. You know, likely you've had other lifetimes there, right? Uh, maybe your, 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 this family ancestry is connected to those. They all have their beautiful traditions, their correspondences, right? Their understandings of, of life itself connected with nature right uh you know the meaning of this crystal or the meaning of this feather the meaning of this herb use those use those as tools to discover and bring forth your magic and so if you want to do a spell if you want to make a change in your life say you want to change um your work situation what things physically represent that you know maybe represent more joy in your work represent more prosperity represent more creativity you know what are those elements that you want to create and it's like you're creating a, a soup or something you know, what ingredients <laughs> do you want in your soup right and then you harness that emotional energy if you're again the work example if you're really feeling like oh my work is horrible <laughs> I hate this you know you probably feel some frustration maybe some anger maybe some sadness use that that emotion is what i call mana it's it's energy that you can then infuse into that spell right a lot of times people suppress their emotions and it's kind of stuck in your system and that is not ideal you want to let that move through you and infuse that into your spell and there's a lot of ways of singing and chanting and just pouring that in there with the elements and then you create that space, that intentional space where you enact the change, you know, and it, it's a movement, it's a dance, so it's a movement of the, the elements, it's, it's like a play, right? How do you play with these energies? And you can even think of a kid, right? When the kid's playing with different, if they're outside and they got some leaves, and they got sticks and they're doing whatever, like tap into that creativity and that play and change that energy. And you're, you're basically stepping outside of uh, the logical linear mind of physical reality of like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, this, da, 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 da. you're going into this magical space, right? And you get creative with it and you create that spell and it's going to be unique. You know, I'm, I do spells for people uh, and everyone's different. You know, somebody reached out to me for help with something specific. I tune into the energies, uh, what's available to me, and I access different uh, resources to create a unique spell for them. So each time it's this creative process for them. Um, so I encourage you to, to play and explore with your spells. Beautiful. Um, I just, I, this is not a question I plan, but I just feel prompted to ask, ask sure. you said that our, um, our big magic is within. I'm wondering yeah. if you can speak to like, what is inner magic? Because mm. I think a lot of times people just think of that, like, oh, like the magic is like you having like a big heart, but I think that it's deeper than that. It's deeper right? than that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I was yeah, totally. Uh, and this goes into the, the avatar concept, ultimately. Um, within you, of course, is what you think of your soul, your spirit. It's your unique essence of the divine, of God, whatever that is for you. We each have our own um, core, unique expression that emerges from within us. Oftentimes, for all of us, right, that gets sort of <laughs> encapsulated into our human story. Right. I'm Aaron Pine. I was born in Ohio and, you know, X, Y and Z's happened to me. And, you know, my parents taught me this and I had these experiences. So that that human self gets sort of in, or encapsulates the spirit underneath is that spirit essence that I call your avatar to me that my avatar is the elven wizard. Right. So I'm I'm letting the Aaron Pine story dissolve a bit and I'm tapping into this unique essence within me. And that's my magic or my avatar, this persona this this inner archetypal being this magical being that's sort of actually outside of the human experience where we're so much more than the human experience so it's tapping into that and right and then bringing that forth so as you do the spells right as i do more wizarding i actually am discovering more of what that is and and what that avatar the essence is of me and bringing that forth into this world so the spell actually <laughs> ultimately is invoking more of me right if i'm not happy with my job it's because i'm not I'm not wizarding as much as I could wizard. So <laughs> I go in and like, oh, I could actually be more of this and actually bring forth more of this. And what does that look like for me? What spell will invoke more of my magic into the world? And that's, I think, what we're all ultimately seeking. We, we, 
get wrapped up because of, of our conditioning of like, oh, I'll be more happy if my job is this or my relationship is this or if I live this way or whatever. Those are usually temporal, right? All that can change at any moment. Even if you have like an amazing relationship, something could happen. The ultimate for me is to discover and bring forth that inner essence yeah. and bring that out to life. That transforms everything. That transforms your relationships, your living situations, your work into alignment with who you really are. You're not playing the human stories over and over and over again. Um, you're developing your own mythos, right? And this is a powerful thing here that I've been sharing is we're generally playing out the role or the character <laughs> of the mythology that we've been given, mm. right? Whether it's, even if it's a beautiful mythology, right? I know Egyptian or Greek or like these ancient ones are beautiful or the modern one in West in America, right? We, there's the mythos, right? That we get impl implanted with and we try to live out. And what if you were to discover the mythology within you, the templates within you, the magic within you and begin to bring that forth. So that's where the power is. I love that. And I think that's so interesting. I mean, I, I want to just pick that apart for a second because I was mm -hmm. really getting you saying like tapping into that mythic essence as the source mm -hmm. of your power. But when I was thinking about it more, I mean, I'm a writer, storyteller. So mm -hmm. I've taught the hero's journey a hundred times. Totally. <laughs> and it's interesting because I, I then I, I found out a couple of years ago that people didn't, some people didn't like, especially women, they didn't like the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And so they're like the heroine's journey. And I was feeling like, there can't just be these two. It can't yeah. <laughs> be this Campbell. And I, you know, like, and I, I think it's really interesting because I was thinking there must be like other systems out there, mm. maybe not on this planet, but maybe they're somewhere else out there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Out there. <laughs> and you're like, it's it. Oh, it's it. <laughs> this way. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's just really, really cool. And I love that because I think that we all are playing out like different different archetypes like you said mm -hmm. it's like and in i feel like in like the hero's journey there are rules you've got right. to go that ordeal that trial and then mm -hmm. you know that death to come out mm -hmm. the other side and it's like wait what if there was a different rule book yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so that's kind of what i like about that inner magic that inner mythos is like throwing out the rule book like I think that is so profound and I've actually mm. never heard someone say that before. Yeah. Yeah. This has been kind of brewing in me and it's really coming through strongly this last year of um, sure. Draw inspiration, right? Like, again, I said, I love Norse mythology. A lot of my work's got definitely some roots in that, but I'm also like, let me create this new mythology. What's birthing inside me, right? We've done all this. We've been in all these incarnations and all these cultures in some form or fashion. Right. And we're creating a new earth is emerging. Right. So, what's this new mythos that we can now generate and we have within us and with the technology available you know so many of us have the ability the capability to create a new mythos more than ever before mm. so right it's ancient cultures you know we're in a village and that's kind of it and 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 stuff but so many of us have, now have the ability the space to emerge what's what's this new mythos within us and expand ourselves I think that's so amazing. I feel like I, I know at the end, I definitely want to ask more about the the beautiful guided journeys you create because it sounds like your imagination is so extraordinary. Not even <laughs> yeah. imagination, your inner mythos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but no, what's coming to mind is like, I think what you're really talking about is chance like to liberate people from mm. the stories that have kind of like kept them small. Yeah. Because, you know, while you're talking, I was thinking about like ancient Greece, which I love ancient Greece, but a right. lot of these myths are like kind of destructive. Sure. There, and if you grew up in that culture, after that, you know, I know no one alive today grew up in ancient Greece, but right. nevertheless, it's like one of those things that, you know, we create reality through the mm -hmm. myths that we tell. Mm -hmm. And I feel that, you know, what you're describing is it's a reset. It's a starting over yeah. and it's actually giving people the freedom not to, like, cause I think that we are like so tapped in on a collective unconscious level to mm -hmm. every story that has ever been told. Totally. Yes. And so it's kind of like, if we can release, if we can come into awareness, let's release those stories that don't serve us and come mm -hmm. into our own story. I'm just reflecting all this back. Yeah. <laughs> this is like what I'm receiving from yeah. you. That's like, it. That's okay. it. 
we've uh you know it's like you like you said a user's manual right uh we've got all these mythic user manuals <laughs> that we've been given of here's how you should operate no here's how you should operate no here's how and of course people are fighting over it and all that stuff right there's actually a uh unique personalized user manual waiting with inside of you and that's that's a lot of my work is helping people like let's get into your user manual and let's get that online and you help you discover what that is and begin to bring that to life you know i'm the elven wizard that's my own unique user manual this it's not you know there's elements of this and that from other but it's totally unique right so i'm bringing that that mythos and then also write your spirit guides right uh and your spiritual connections those are part those are mythical characters within your mythos right i've got some different dragons i've got the squirrel i've got the hawk i've got uh different guides that have showed up over the years those are the beings that are in uh, mythology right the characters and they all inspire me and uplift me and help me with different things so it's it's reconnecting and developing your own story <laughs> thank you that was absolutely beautiful mm. um I'm going to press on with the questions because I'm just, I'm loving this. Um, so on your website, you can tell that I was like a student here. I was like, on your website, you said um, that if someone wants to do a spell with you, um, it's not so much about them believing in it, but allowing it. Can you explain why allowing is more important than believing? Mm, yeah. So believing uh, activates the mind a lot, right? It's like, Oh, I can I can believe in this, and even if you have that belief, even if you believe in the spell, there's still this in in uh, this activity of the mind to come in and think about it's going to happen or it's not happening or when's it going to happen or did it happen or <laughs> right? It starts to engage the mind. The allowing is simply being coming back and allowing whatever needs to unfold to come forth. Right? It it allows the mind to soften and then the spirit to come through and the energies to move through. Often we get in our mind, the mind can limit and try to bind things up. And the mind has those stories in it, right? It has those old mythologies, um, mythologies from the world or mythologies from our past. Whether you believe it or not, that's like, it's enacting that system. Uh, when you allow, you're just, okay, it is. I'm allowing the magic to un to do what it needs to. And some of this can be like, you know, um, say for the example, the work thing, you might think, oh, I need to get hired by somebody else, or I need to, to go create this new job. So, and I believe, you know, Aaron's going to do the spell and that's, what's going to happen. If you allow something else might come through, that's completely outside of anything you can think of. <laughs> and you, you open yourself to receive magical potentials that are beyond the thought. So I invite people to, you know, let go of that. And of course, in modern society, there, there is, even if it's subtle, and uh, I'm sure it's hopefully subtle for a lot of you guys, right? You're on this magical <laughs> summit here, but there may be still this subtle like disbelief, like I believe in magic, but maybe not. I believe in magic, but maybe only so far, <laughs> right? So there's, there's still that there, right? And I've had to work through that, you know, and it's continued layered, but like, okay, I'm just going to allow it. I'm going to allow whatever needs to happen to flow through. So that shifts and opens the field of potential for this magic to happen. Thank you. I just thought that was really important because I, I knew it was subtle, but I thought it was like really important and profound. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, thank you for that. And mm -hmm. I also wanted to touch on something that we talked about. We connected like two weeks ago mm -hmm. and a couple of weeks ago, you shared that you've been in the process of unraveling a spell mm -hmm. that's made most people believe that magic is real. <laughs> I know it's terrible. Um, can you tell us more about that? Also know that we've been doing some work with that during this summit. Oh, um, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Great. I don't want to have to do this by myself. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess as it's, you know, my personal journey and opening up my magic, working with clients, and also just looking at the collective fields, um, there has been this suppression of magic, obviously. Within that is actually magic. There's a form of magic used to suppress magic, right? Um, <laughs> I don't want to point fingers, but you know, the different forms and, and organizations and structures that have suppressed magic use forms of magic to suppress other forms of magic, right? There's their own symbols and rituals and practices and structures um, to stamp out other forms of magic. And it's created all right, a suppression or an anti-magic, even though it's still, it's still magic. It's still a different form of magic, right? 
Um, and even in the modern day, you know, very materialistic world, there's still magic. We talked about this right in the history, but, you know, if you look at brands, you know, I've been doing years of web design and graphic design and marketing, mostly for spiritual businesses, but even like all the main big brands, they're using magic in their symbols and their logos. If you go into sacred geometry, it's a whole wormhole, but, you know, they're using magical principles um, to promote themselves right government buildings you know there are certain structures to the geometries of those to hold form and energy in certain ways you know if you watch any of the speakers of, of government speakers or whatever they're using a form of magic to project their energy and enchant people into that so there is this magic even though it's pushing us away from our uh, more mystical concepts of magic so I've been working with people individually and then a lot of the stuff I do on a larger scale is to help unravel that and help people discover these new forms of magic within them. Thank you. Now, I'm I'm curious. Uh, I think what you're describing are these kind of collective spells and yeah. like you're describing so like when you watch the news, there's a collective spell. And, <laughs> and, and I'm wondering if you can speak to like, you know, I, I've been thinking about this since since you and I connected two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I because I was shocked that a spell could be like not just like nationwide, worldwide. Mm -hmm. worldwide like yeah. Global scale. What's global, yeah. uh -huh. and uh, so I'm just curious, like. I just want to, I think that the, the things that are most scary are the ones that are kind of like in the things you don't see, like the mm. blind spots. And so I'm mm. just curious, what like collective spells do you feel that like we, um, we magical beings here at the summit, what do we need to see through so that we can mm. really step into our sovereignty mm. and our most empowered and magical lives? Mm. Yeah. Well, right. The, the big ones going on, right. Our fear. And there's so much to be afraid of be afraid of this and this war and economy and environment and on and on and like spell after spell of, of fear at every angle right every level of human and technology be afraid of technology and be afraid of this and afraid of this right all that fear keeps you in suppression and disconnection and disassociation and probably like, I don't even want to be here. And so your spirit's like, you dissociate and disconnect, I, you know, uh, you're not bringing forth your magic. So all these spells, right, are, are constantly generated on news and social media and just all over the place and, and people get wrapped up into it. And then a lot of people are regurgitating those spells, right? I listened to the news two hours last night. Now I'm here talking to my friends at work or I'm out to dinner and I'm going to regurgitate. I'm going to reenact the spell that I heard on the news last night. And so it just keeps propagating those same spells, that same energy, those same forms over and over and over again. And what I invite people to do, right? I'm aware of that. I'm aware of these, all these things going on as, as minimally as I can, but I'm aware of them, but I use that. Oh, cool there's this crazy stuff going on let me actually invoke and bring forth more of my magic into the world let me draw forth more of my power what else can i create that is more positive uplifting and inspiring to the world how else can i help my community how else can i uplift those people around me how else, how else can i uplift you know i did a meditation guiding people over to israel the other week how else can i go in there and bring my magic to that space right i'm very of course love the trees so there's all the global warming, fear, fear, fear. Oh, how else can I empower and support nature, right? So I look at every every fear spell, I, uh, <laughs> I counter it with how can I bring forth more of my magic into the world, right? So I actually, you know, it's you don't want to also get into this mindset of, oh, that stuff's bad. Be neutral about it and then use it as fuel to empower you to bring forth more of your spirit, your essence, your magic. I love that. I really, I love the duality. Like you're saying like, it's not good or bad. It's just mm. your two sides of the same coin. Right. I was listening to kind of yin and yang as you were mm -hmm. speaking. Yeah. And uh, this is like, I, I want to get into this more toward like the last part of the interview, but I, cause I know we're going to talk about your inner realms. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious, like, so you spoke about the fear and mm. uh, I think that one thing that I know people, when they go on these epic quests, like with you, mm -hmm. uh, I feel that like, there's an activation of courage. Yeah. Like there's an active, like a, a valor mm -hmm. courage. And so I just kind of want to speak to that because like you're describing like this collective spell of fear. And it's almost like for some people, the fear is bigger than them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like kind of inviting in this moment really inviting in this energy of like such powerful soul fire, soul courage. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like we probably have an easier time connecting to that when we connect with our inner avatar. Mm. And I'm wondering if you can speak to that. Yes, yes, totally. So yeah, the right, it's going back to that human story, and which for a lot of us is encoded with fear, you know, ancestral fear, uh, modern day fear is a program in there. It's part of the human <laughs> framework, the survival, right? And my if I step out, right? If I go wizard around, am I going to be kicked out of society, right? Am I, so there's like all those layers of fear. When you come into your avatar form, the avatar is is here to to ex, uh, express its magic, its truth. Your avatar expended a lot of energy to be manifested here in this world in this particular time right now, right? So when that avatar comes online, you move out of the fear stories. You tap into your own mythos, right? So my mythos as the elven wizard is I came here to activate as much magic in this world as possible to uplift and activate as many avatars as I can, right? That's my main focus. Money, all the other stuff, like, great, if it happens, cool. But my main thing is how can I activate as many avatars and unleash as much magic and positivity in this world as possible? That fuels my courage and strength and opens my heart and actually allows more of my life force to come through my system. When you, we're in, uh, engaged in fear or there's other storylines, our soul's not fully engaged. We're not accessing all of our soul force, all of our soul's magic, you know, because the soul is not really concerned with a lot of that stuff, really. That's like the human story. When we step into our soul or avatar, that unleashes this massive divine creative potential that is within us. That's our unique uh, divine self. It is the God, goddess self that is within us waiting to emerge, right? So we shift into the avatar, uh, the, the fear can dissolve and our courage comes online. And I've seen it, of course, myself, but a lot of my students, people have been doing it in around this journey. Um, you know, there's one guy, for example, I love the reference. He's, he had all these ideas of things he wanted to do in his life that he never did. He started doing inner realms. He tapped into his avatar. Now he's doing it. He's writing his book. He's doing readings. He's, he's creating all kinds of online content and he's getting out in the world. He's showing up and work differently. So it allows you to move out of the fear patterns and back into who you are and why you came here and realize how precious this life is, this opportunity to be here and that you don't want to waste it. You want to, I'm here. Let's do this. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm like speechless. That was so beautiful. I love mm. like your life mission to bring more positivity, more magic into the world. Mm. That is gorgeous. And I also just love like you saying, like this like real life experiences of people who have gone, they've gone into their inner avatar, embody the truth of who they really are. And because of that, there's a ripple effect. Yeah. Yeah. That's really what I I, I want to ask you more about this later because I think that's so profound. And especially like I, I feel like anyone who is a writer, storyteller, there's a lot of work that we do with archetypes. And yeah. I feel like it's almost like what you're describing, this avatar is beyond an archetype. Mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah. It's like yeah. it's almost beyond that is just this mythic essence. Mm -hmm. and I really feel like that's what's so powerful is like you've gone to the source, like you said, the source of God, goddess, creator, divine. And that's what you're helping people tap into. Yeah, no. And I also just want to like briefly draw attention. I believe the name of this title, uh, the title of your talk, it's Unleashing the Infinite Magic Within. That's it. <laughs> I did it. Okay, I did it. Yes. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, so, no, I just, and I feel like that's what you're really describing here. Like that's like in a that's nutshell. It. Like, that's it in a nutshell. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, um, let me, let me grab. Uh, so one of my uh, animal allies is the squirrel or ratatasker. Uh, on the tree of life. And so I've got uh, him oh, over here. You want to say hi? He likes to say hi. One of my guys. Um, so the Rata Taskers on the Norse tree of life is a squirrel that connects all the realms and travels all the realms. So um, that's why he's been there with me. But yeah, it's, it's we are so much more and so unique. There's this divine soup of ingredients. So it's it's letting ourselves unravel all the mythos and the the spells here right and like okay who what are we really what's beyond this and let's bring that forth i love that so my next question i'm not kidding this is super funny is about the tree of life <laughs> so <Perfect. it's> like, <laughs> that's <laughs> why i came in he's like hey <laughs> well, he was like this is the question it's coming is it, wait, it's, it's, i don't know if it's a male or female guide either way this is a tree of life question and you're gonna have to help me pronounce um it's Yggdrasil. I never say this right. Yeah. It, uh, Yggdrasil. 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 Yeah. I'm going to try my best. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Yg 
Sinestra Silk. <laughs> I took um, I took Italian for four years. It took me three to learn how to roll my R's. So. All right, all right. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if we get it today, but I'm going to do my best. So, so I know you work with Igrisil, um, the Norse tree of life, uh, which holds the nine realms. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how you work with uh, Igrisil uh, to give people an experience of living magic? Yeah, so uh, there's still the, the Norse tree of life concept and the tree of life concept has variations all over the world. Uh, and that's one of the things that really sparked my interest in it. When I discovered that it was like pretty much every culture has some form or fashion of the tree of life. There's definitely very um, similar concepts, frameworks. They're each unique in their own culture, right? They each adapted their mythos around the tree of life. Uh, the Norse one's definitely been the most uh, exciting for me uh, and part of it's my connection and living in that lifetime or living in Norse times and ancient times. Um, so the tree of life concept is that there are in the Norse one, nine realms. The human world is one realm on the tree of life. These other realms are what you might call dimensions uh, exist right up in the branches or down in the roots of the tree of life. And there's all these mythical characters that live in these different realms, the gods and goddesses and elves and dwarves and dark elves and giants and fire giants and dragons. And of course, the project Tasker <laughs> lives on the tree of life. Right? <laughs> and in their mythos, right, the gods and goddesses travel these different realms and kind of go on different adventures and journeys and find magic and learn magic and battle each other and all sorts of stuff happens. Um, and that sets up the framework of their mythos. Um, we have access to these other realms there are also aspects within us right we are connected to these different realms and so i in a lot of my work is journeying to these other realms which is actually journeying to other aspects of your multi-dimensional nature and bringing those online it's re rebuilding those bridges to these other realms now my work in inner realms journey um is inspired by that but have expanded right the norse mythology that we have has nine realms uh, I'm at, I think, around 60 realms <laughs> on Inner Realms Journey. Each one's a guided journey to these different realms. And what you're doing is actually accessing the magic of that realm, that part of you that is connected to that realm, and then bringing that online and embodying that, right? It's like um, turning on all these lights and realizing that the tree of life is within you. You are all these, and we're all our own unique tree, right? I have more connections, say, to the elven realm, uh, you may, I think you probably do, but you know, everyone has their own sort of combination, right. Of which realms, um, you know, I've got some people that have been doing it. They're very connected to the ice realm or the fire realm, or there's so many different ones that empowers them to bring forth that magic and that essence, and also continue to build and expand this tree of life, which is expanding your mythos into all these realms. And so that tree of life inspires us and is also the framework, the structure, right? If you imagine a tree, um, I'll show you the, if you can see the, the logo there, right? That little tree there, you got the person in the middle, you've got the roots going down and the branches and all those little spheres. See that, That's yeah. the tree, right? So we are all that and we like to have our own connections to those different realms. I like that you brought props. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they help. <laughs> and, um, I also like that you've used wizard as a verb. I've never heard that before. Right? <laughs> That's true. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> and I was like, like how can I wizard? And I was like, does he know he's using this? I'm like, my brain's like, does he know? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, okay. So we're shifting gears, but I think it's going to be really cool. This is for everyone listening. This is the dragon moment. Mm, so yeah. I'm curious. Uh, can, yes, I know. Frey, I'm like, I'm <laughs> I'll let her answer. <laughs> So uh, can you talk about your relationship with the dragons mm -hmm. and how you connect with them to create magic in the world? Mm, yeah, love it. Um, you know, my first connection, I think, was through probably Dungeons and Dragons or some fantasy novels back in, I think, around sixth grade. Uh, so they've continued to show up. Right. I, I, I mentioned my first uh, teacher saw the dragon around me. Uh, it, it came to me very quickly after then. Uh, after that in meditation and then over the years many dragons have have shown themselves to me uh, so there's sort of a whole council of dragons that supports me uh, they at times or on some of my first introductions to them I'll say or, or reconnections they'll come very come in very intensely like whole body ooh, crying shaking like you know people talk of kundalini open just like ripples of power moving through me uh, and their force and they've actually 
want me to train others to activate their the dragon energy but help be a uh, transmitter so it's not so intense mm -hmm. for people because it was very intense and i you know luckily had the training and ability to navigate that and it kind of you know there's one time it, they came through in a yoga class actually in la at the end and everyone's like laying down for savasana right all peaceful and these dragons start coming in and i'm like whoa like i had to get out i had to step out because i couldn't like sit in that like just relax pose the intensity there so helping people like uh transmit and and then be able to bring into the body the dragon energy because it's intense and because it's strong and it's you know a bit removed from the human experience and there's a lot of again there's some fear right around dragons and uh they've been sort of de demonized so softening that allowing the dragon energy to come in um i'm just tuning in to them because they're wanting to speak um so we haven't gone over this but also speak some called light language languages of the soul um so i'm going to actually they want me to <laughs> cut, transmit some of their language they want to speak um so i invite you just to to receive this <laughs> as they speak it's like i'm allowing more of their energy to be expressed into the physical world as actually they're they're speaking to the dragons around you and inviting them forth as i bring them through me it's um uh, it's creating that safety within your system to let them come through you stronger they're here to help humanity right now and support us their energy can then infuse into your magic, right? Into helping you transform and activate your courage, who you are and your passions and, and what you're here for. So that's what they're, they're here to help. And we all have our own different kind of dragon connections and different types of dragons. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I felt that. That was really, <laughs> I like, I felt more grounded in my, yeah. like my being. I was like, yeah. very powerful. And um, I actually, that was actually how I was first introduced to you. I took like a light language course you did right. uh, like three or four years ago. I, it was, and so anyway, so it's so funny. You never know, like three or four years ago, it was like, <laughs> pandemic. I was like, oh, never, right. Never light language <laughs> then here it is like four years later, you're here and we're doing this magic together. Right. It's amazing. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And I just love that because you never kind of know. It's like you plant a seed, you never know what's going to sprout. So I love that. Um, so more on the dragons. Uh, can you share the wisdom of the dragons, including the knowledge, sacred understanding, and major lessons they have taught you? Oh, I'm sorry. Could you say one again? It just kind of like paused. Oh, the made it over. Okay. Yeah. Right. Too much dragon energy. Down. Okay. <laughs> Can you share the wisdom of the dragons, including the knowledge, sacred understanding, and major lessons they have taught you? They took a they want to inspire humanity to reconnect with their magic. And that power, right? You, we all carry an aspect of that dragon energy within us that can bring us that courage, that fire, that life force, right? And empower us to move forward. It's easy to get bogged down in this world with all the, the fear spells and stuff. They're able to help you unravel that. And um, right, if you imagine like their wings, like sort of push that aside and out of your system so that you can really bring forth your magic. It's a, a lot of like guarding energy for people. Um, and also this encouragement to step up um they want me to share uh so the other year i was in the rocky mountains and one came through to me very intensely it was one of those like like on the ground <laughs> shaking and, <laughs> and um oh let me just double check we're uh plugged in here one second all right don't worry Make the magic is still happening right. You're all good. okay there we go um Hold on, wait, I think, I can't hear you now. Wait, stop, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, you now. Now. Okay, good. back, all right. Our great, one of our greatest fears is to realize all that we are. Ooh. To realize that power, the potential, and the capability that we all carry. And the dragons are here to remind us of that, what we really are. And to bring that forth right again going back to what we've talked about before we've been wrapped up in these limited mythos and the dragon's like you're so much more <laughs> let me show you and that's where that intensity is they have this ferocity to cut through the illusion and the distortion and the binds and the bonds and open up our real power okay i love that 
it's just interesting when you brought the light language through, I just, I felt it so viscerally in my body. It's, it's mm-hmm. just interesting because I know some people come and they say that they are like the living embodiments of dragons. So I'm wondering like when we connect with dragons and, they, and they're here to help us, mm-hmm. is it that we just connect with them as guides or is there more of an embodiment that happens? I'm just curious what you think. So yeah, um, kind of a lot. I'll, it can vary for each person, but sort of step one is the guides, right? Okay. To sort of be aware of them around you. And then the next step is then the embodiment and bringing that dragon energy through. And for me, that's through, you know, both attuning my frequency, right? As they're speaking, I kind of like, it's like, uh, I can hear the radio station, (laughs) the dragon radio station coming through. Um, I also do a lot of movement pretty much every morning and let them, that energy flow through my body and how I move. Of course, the speaking light language is another way for them to come through. Um, So it's constantly like letting that energy of the dragon move into my body through my energy channels and that has actually helped me a lot in my you know some of my like back uh, tension i've had um it empowers me kind of gives me that the juice <laughs> energy juice in the morning um to open up so that embodiment is allowing that dragon energy to move through your system move through your energy channels and empower you okay Beautiful answer. Thank you. So now I'm putting you into the storyteller role. Sure. <laughs> I think you can, I think you can take, it. okay. So everyone loves legends and stories of dragons, but these creatures are still very much shrouded in mystery. I'd love to hear a story that provides a glimpse of their true nature. Do you have a favorite dragon story you can share with us? Not one that's been told here before. At the beginning, before humanity, before many of the animals and plants on this world, and even before this world, there were dragons. Uh, as caretakers and directors of primal life force energies throughout the universe, um, guardians and guides of high level Pure, intention, pure intelligence, pure infinite source energy, if you will. And the dragons emerged from that and then guided that into different forms, uh, almost like managers or directors of the great cosmic symphony, putting together these different um, stages, these different games for souls to step into and play, setting the foundations of the earth and other planets, for the many forms and spirits to interplay and come alive and explore themselves. And so the dragons have been there and have been watching and enjoying the unfolding of it all and also inspiring those who get lost and uh, stuck in the games. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm just receiving that. Mm-hmm. that was beautiful. <laughs> That's from that. <laughs> it was a very cosmic. Um, you have people uh, in the chat, like someone saying like, my oh, whole yeah. vibrating with energy. I also saw in the chat when you first got here, I think someone said like, we need more of Aaron's magic in the world. Mm, but, you oh, know, thank you. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness. Um, oh my God, I'm losing my ability to speak here. That's so beautiful. Um, and it's not often I'm rendered speechless. So mm. job dragons. <laughs> um, but okay. So I've heard you speak before about bringing dragon energy into every area of your life. What does that look like? Mm-hmm. So, right. Like you guys were watching me. I'm listening with my human mind and then i'm also paying attention and feeling them come in and speak to me and move through me so even like their energy is moving my hands and guiding my hand movements and my body like i can feel it rippling through my spine so that's the core of it is holding that inside of you and and developing that relation with them right i've been doing this for years now of re of opening my system and developing that relation. How does that feel inside of me? Uh, how does that feel in my body? How does that move through me? Then I'm able to tap into that wherever I'm at, whether I'm on the computer doing work stuff, 
I'm out in nature. I'm with friends. <laughs> I've got friends that are like, oh, here goes these kids, the dragon's coming through, right? Or even if I'm with a partner in, in you know, lovemaking, like I, that energy comes through and opens up the field and, and expands my energy field, right? It's like, okay, there's, there's Aaron, human self, and then there's also the dragons and these other dimensions of me that are flowing through me and interplaying in the experience, right? It's like they're, they're stepping into the game. Right. If you've ever played a video game, right, you're like there's you're the one controlling, but maybe you've got your friends around you. It's like letting all of them come in and also play in the game. And it's it's opening up to all those realms that we're connected to. And the dragons are, you know, they're more than one realm, but you can think of it as like one realm on the tree of life. There's the dragon realms and there's many different ones, but it's it's build that relation, that connection, that energy is then able to flow. Same with the elves, right? I have a strong connection with the elves. It's like I can also let their energy come through. It's a little bit calmer. It's not as intense. <laughs> so I can let them, a little more gentle and, and flowy. So their energy can come in too, right? Um, so it's opening those portals and then building the relationship uh, with them. Again, just like you build a relationship with a person, you establish that connection. I feel like you must have a very crazy life. You've got like the dragon speaking in one ear, the elves in the other. Like, how do you say that? <laughs> he keeps them organized. Okay, okay, now it all makes sense. Like, yeah. up and down the tree of life, absolutely. Right, yeah. So there's a balancing and then right fine tuning. Like I, you know, part of my work is to bring through a lot of realms to right create a realm's journey and support different people because everyone has their own combinations or unique ones or different ones that will come online at different points so you know you get to find you get to like i like said earlier soup like what's your magic soup <laughs> and then you synergize that right you know i've synergized the dragon and the elves and the squirrel and these different things that are me into my mythos so it becomes a, a harmonic thing it's expansive right it's bigger than just the human self but there's a harmony that that comes online with it Beautiful. Thank you. That's actually a, a great segue because I'm about to ask about your inner journeys. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I'm really excited for this. And it's funny because I wasn't planning on asking you these questions and they just like came through. It's like, you must ask me. <laughs> hey, okay. I'll listen. I'll do it. Okay. And okay. So you create a lot of sacred journeys for people. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about the power of imagination, visualization, and going to these sacred realms? What originally led you to develop these magical experiences for people? Mm, yeah. Well, I'll start with the origin point of this. So, um, you know, I mentioned earlier growing up teenager playing Dungeons and Dragons. Can you hear me? There's a little bit of a... I, oh, I can hear you. You're good. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons, right? Which for those of you who don't know, is this very imaginative storytelling experience. You, you're basically playing this adventure out with a group of friends and it's all story-based and you're imagining, you know, going on all these different adventures to fight monsters and gather treasures and discover magic and things like that. So I grew up playing that. And that really, I feel like was a powerful way for me to develop my imagination because you're envisioning these things and problem solving through it. And then, like I said, when I was 18, I explored my first guided meditations. And, you know, it was like, you go to a forest and you see your spirit guide. And I was like, oh, this is, I've been doing this every Sunday with my friends, <laughs> like using the same faculty of imagination and, and letting sort of the vision unfold. And, you know, then as I got into meditation and guided meditation and shamanic journey work, I was like, oh, it's very similar. I'm, I, you you're going inside using the imagination and the imagination allows you to interface with these other spiritual realms, right? These other realms exist in energy or a different frequency than the physical. The imagination is that interplay between your conscious mind and the mystical realms. Same like dreams, right? It's like these mystical things are happening and it comes through symbols. Same thing. It's a part of your imagination to connect with them and let them come through. Um, so, I realized the power there. And then if I could start to uh, use these symbols and imagine of effects to help people start to access all these different realms. And then of course, the tree of life was the structures, the framework that I used to organize all these realms. And so guiding people through these journeys, uh, the inner realms journey, you know, is all these guided meditations. And we've, we've brought in beautiful music and um, sound effects. I've got an amazing audio guy connected with in England. So I've pushed him to his limits on, on sound I'm like i need a watery portal that opens up and then the dragon and then so he's like i don't know like he's amazing he's able to he's been able to to really bring back some amazing music and sound effects to the narration uh and then i also do different voices i'm channeling the voices of different characters you meet 
uh, some of the light language. I've uh, brought in different female friends and actors to do different female voices as well. So it creates this immersive experience, but it's also uh, inviting your own imagination and your own connection to these realms. So everybody you know, that does one journey, say there's a, a journey to the fairy realm or the fire realm, Although there's a, a base foundation that's supplied with the narration and the music, everyone's experience is completely unique to them because they're using their own imagination to fill in the rest of the experience. Beautiful. So my next question is, I think it's kind of connected to imagination, but it's really more about the avatar self. And mm. it's interesting, but I think usually we think of imagination as coming from the mind. But mm. after talking to you, I feel like maybe imagination comes from a deeper place. Maybe it is really coming from that soul essence. Mm -hmm. So that's like, I'm going to maybe open that up to you in a second, but first I want to just ask the bigger question. So usually, um, in these inner world journeys, uh, you have people connect with their avatar self. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the mythic significance of that? Why are they connecting with their avatar self in these journeys? And then from that place, connecting with these realms of imagination. Mm, yeah. So yeah, in the, the beginning of the inner realms journey, the kind of first steps is to connect and develop this avatar right? Your, your mythical self. And uh, the process takes you through a creative imaginative process to allow, you know, your avatar to be created and really to be, to remember it, to allow it to emerge through your imagination into your conscious mind. It's kind of a, a download process, right? Of it coming back to you. And then from there, at the beginning of every journey, you reconnect with that avatar. And then you go on these journeys into these realms as your avatar, because that's your power itself, right? And there are some realms that are dark and there's some scary things in some of them. There's a warning there, but you go into these realms, but you're not going in just as your human self. You're going in as this, you know, superhero avatar self and you get to discover and play with your magic. How can I overcome these dark things or these challenges or these obstacles? obstacles? This trains you to realize your own potential as you come back into this world, right? This world, our human self, is just one realm. And when you establish your avatar in these inner realms and your imagination and your connection into spirit, you're able to really embody it and see it and then bring it through. It's, it's a lot easier for people to, okay, I'm going to go on this imaginative journey as my elven wizard or my fairy witch self, and I can be in it there full on. It's easier for people to do that than let me bring it in here, <laughs> right? Yeah. So this that's it's almost like the training ground for your consciousness to reconnect with the avatar, to understand it, to develop it, and then bring it to life. And so the the every journey you go to your avatar, you go on the journey, and then you bring that avatar back in here. And so it's this rebuilding and uh, restoring of the avatar into this realm. Um, this realm, because of that anti-magic, is uh, the most challenging <laughs> for people to bring their avatar in, right? So this process helps you establish that, connect with it, and then bring it to life. Okay. That is really beautiful. Um, I So I have, I'm so curious about these journeys because mm -hmm. I... I think that what you've created, I think it's like genius. I mean, I'm right. sure it's like soul download, but like, it's, totally. <laughs> it's amazing. I, like, as I'm saying, it's like, this is like such a groundbreaking thing that you've created. Mm, yeah. And I just really feel like you're, you're really living your mission to bring magic to the world. And mm. I also love, I'm just like, I don't, I'm someone who like in the past, I was more like anti-technology. Now I've embraced it, but I also love that you can create like this, like one beautiful, like magical activation. And there's the multiplicity that like a million people yeah. could hear it and yeah. be brought into that magic. That's it. So your ability to like <laughs> the world with your unique form of magic is infinite now. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one thing that like, I just kind of want to just come back to, because I, I do have more questions uh, about this, but I just really want to go back to this, this beautiful title, like, you know, unleashing the infinite magic within. And I just feel like the word mm. that's really wanting to be presence is infinite. And I'm just wondering if you could speak to that infinite magic. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Mm. When you realize that infinite potential within you, when you access that, um, all those limitations, right? Those old user manuals <laughs> that you're limited, you can only do so much, dissolve. And then it's just unlimited creative potential within you emerges. And that's, you know, like in a realm's journey, like you said, it has infinite potential. You know, anybody around the world could jump on there and activate their magic within <laughs> half an hour mm. around the world, <laughs> right? for free you, anyone go on there right um so i use technology right 
this is what's available. This is a, a current resource, just like in ancient times. Okay, they didn't have technology. They had plants or they had uh, maybe a sword or whatever. They use that technology. Here's what's available. There's technology available to me. Let me tap into my avatar, my infinite magic, and then merge them, right? I brought forth my inner magic into what's around me and created a ritual, right? Inner Realm's journey is my own ritual. And it's also simultaneously, it's transformed me. It's invoked more of the elven wizard. I have to show up fully as the elven wizard to tell other people <laughs> to step into their avatar. So it's unleashed that within me. So as I've created Inner Realm's journey, it's opened up my own potential within me and thus inspiring others to do so as well. So you, you've, I've connected to this infinite potential loop within me and trusting in that and allowing that to unfold, right? I, you know, I have visions of where this might go, but I'm also, I have to allow it to unfold <laughs> in the interface with humanity. But uh, that is that uh, trusting in that vision, right? In that magic within me to share and spread around the world. And we each carry that, right? We each have that infinite essence of the universe within us, the infinite realms, the tree of life that is all things and everywhere that can flow through us when we open to it. Beautiful. Thank you for that. That was just amazing. I just feel like you were a very eloquent speaker. I love mm, that. Thank you. <laughs> So my next question um, is, uh, I love that all your inner journeys contain the energy of adventure. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if you can speak about the essence of adventure mm -hmm. and why it's so important for the soul. Mm, yeah, I love that. Um, well, I love it really. Of course, I, I got inspired by adventure playing Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> and then <laughs> to be able to bring that to life um, shifts your perception of challenges or the darkness, right? Like we're talking about the anti-magic spell uh, and all the fear going on. It's easy to get subjugated and compressed in that, mm -hmm. right? But if you start to shift that, oh, I'm here, I'm actually an avatar on an adventure here in the realm of earth. Mm -hmm. It's temporal. I'm only gonna be here for 70, 100, 150, 200 years, whatever. <laughs> I'm on this adventure here. Let me make the most of it. What can I, what challenges can I overcome? Uh, how can I help others? What can I learn? What can I harness? And what can I create here? Uh, in the inner realms journey, right? You're traveling to these other realms. That's the foundation of them. You know, they're each different, but you're ultimately, you're like, okay, I'm going to this particular realm to explore and experience something new. Okay, I'm going to the ice realm. And I'm going to explore this landscape. I'm going to have some obstacles. I'm going to learn something. I'm going to gain something. I'm going to maybe create something there. So if you can bring that to this realm, that you're only here for an adventure for X amount of years. Uh, you came in with you know, certain resources within you and whatever resources were given to you, you know, and, and we all have different ones. It's like, okay, this is my, this is what I got. This is what I got to work with. And you start from there and you start your adventure, you know, as a baby <laughs> and you grow up and you're given different things and you learn things. And so it shifts your mindset to like, okay, let me just play with this. Let me just have fun. I don't have to get bogged down and all this stuff. Sure. There's, there's crappy things going on. What can I do with that? How can I transform that? How can I overcome those things? And it just shifts you into more of a playful state which opens you up your creativity, which opens up your joy and your passion and your magic and allows you to bring that to life. You know, we, we all get trained to be adults and everything has to be so serious and you've got to complete X, Y, and Z to be successful. You got to do X, Y, and Z to be a successful person or adult. And we get locked and bound and, and frustrated and stressed out with that. If we let that go, like, ah, oh, this is an adventure. This is amazing. I get to be here in this human game for a little while and, and have this strange, you know, I call it the bio suits, the human system and, you know, yes. right. These, these fingers <laughs> and this is wild. Yeah. Like, you know, because we're actually these avatars that are multidimensional. We're like, Oh, I got this, this, this human suit. All right. Let me see what, what this thing can do and what I can do with it. Right. So it just shifts the whole perception of your experience here, which, which brings that fun and that adventure. And that's going to be different for all of us, right? We all want to experience a different adventure. We're going to have different things come at us. And you just, you engage with things in a playful, expressive, creative way, which again, ultimately brings forth more of your magic. Beautiful. So I, I know that you're actually going to lead us through some kind of magical experience, but mm. first I have one question that I just mm. like feel coming through. And so you've talked about powerful transformation. Like you mentioned, like different clients you've worked with who like they went on these inner realms journeys and they saw ripples in their own life. Yeah. I'm curious if you can speak to some of the most profound transformation that you've experienced Me. going mm. on these sacred journeys. Mm. Yeah. 
it's <laughs> well there's one uh it's interesting for me for the process of making these journeys right i kind of scout out these realms is what my experience has been and i have my own experience and then i dictate while i'm then there i dictate to an app that records it and then i go back and polish it record the narration the voices send it to the audio guy he then sends it back and i have to listen to it more from a technical place like make sure everything sounds right and you got the right sounds and all that eventually i get to do it myself as just like let me just play and enjoy this <laughs> after a bit of a process when i go in that space and it's like okay i'm going back into this realm with the enhancement of the music and the sound and you know the guidance um i've had profound experiences there's one that takes you um into this uh, underwater world and you meet these multi-dimensional whale beings and uh eventually you get i don't want to give away too much of it but you eventually get to an elder of their species and he kind of speaks to you and gives you a bit of a quest to go on and i remember when i really got to listen to that and uh, you know there's added layers of his voice and the voice i channeled and the sound effects i could just feel i was just like like I'm in, I just felt like I was in front of this huge being that was like ancient and wise and just just beyond anything my my human mind like was like oh my gosh like just the power and presence of that. Um, so experience for me experiencing these realms that come through me and then getting to experience them in this world is just like amplified my confidence in what I'm doing and what I'm creating. Like okay, like if I can feel this, what's this rippling out to the world? that i'm i'm being this bridge for these other dimensions and letting them really in a new profound way express themselves into the physical world for humanity and and, and connect with humanity um of course the whole process is, has helped me develop my avatar as the elven wizard it's developed over the last three years of doing this um you know not just partially my garb <laughs> but also internally and what that looks like and feels like inside of me um and the, the it's it strengthened my connection to these realms like that they're not so far away like they're right there i can i can tap into these realms easily that support from them that magic that guidance is, is always there and available and i think that's really profound and gives me a lot of courage right to go forth into the world and do this and to to, to know that they're there to support me wherever i'm at Thank you. That was, a, that was a beautiful answer. And actually, while you were talking at the end, I, I thought of when the first was like the second question I asked you like about your, your sacred journey to discovering magic. And you mentioned being like 18, going to the psychic fair and the five psychics being like, you're this master. Of magic. You're like, Wait, I'm, I'm going to college right now. Right? Right. <laughs> and I just want to just reflect back that I really feel like, like the story you just said of like being so connected to these realms, I really feel like that was a story of you, like from that 18 year old moment, learning that you were that master of magic to actually being it here now. Mm, yeah, totally, thank you. Yeah, and I just yeah. feel that you are really embodying that and bringing that energy. Thank you, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, Inner Realm's journey has definitely been like the realization, like you said, of that mastery that I have. It's like, you know, there's all the process of creating it and the, the business aspects and stuff, but then to like feel it and let myself go into it. It's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what have I, what have I created here? <laughs> wow. And, and let that flow through. Yeah. And so it's, and then it's encouraged me to step through. Yes, I am master of this. This is what I came here for. Uh, this is what I've been doing for many ages. And um, this is my offering and gift to the world and what these realms are asking of me to, to bring forth. Yeah, we, we are actually going to share more about that. Like that is like, you know, Aaron's free gift. Uh, he's going to lead us through a beautiful, um, I'm not actually sure, but it's going to be magical. <laughs> um, but I, I just wanted, I had something I was going to say back. Um, maybe it's going to come to me later. I was, I do this thing where I'm like, I have this great thing to say. And right. I want to listen, you know? And, oh no, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. I got it. I'm sorry. I got excited. I was like, <laughs> that's one thing I, I remembered and I was just going to say is I just want to reflect back to you that it's not just like the master of magic, but also the master teacher. Mm. Uh, because I know this as a teacher myself that like, I can, I can know how to do something. Mm -hmm. And I can try to teach people how to do it. 
but like, that's the most challenging thing. How do they learn how to do it on their own? Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that what you have created with like the inner journeying, that's why it's so profound because you've created something that people can experience this magic. Like that's, Mm -hmm. that's what's so profound. Like if, you know, I teach, I teach writing, I teach storytelling. Mm -hmm. If I'm there with someone in real time, I can hold that space. I can help them have the breakthrough. But when I leave, you know, like that's the thing. Mm -hmm they don't necessarily know how to connect all the dots anymore. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm just really like wanting to just draw attention to like, not just the master wizard, but like the master soul teacher that is also really presence that you are embodying here. It's Mm -hmm. in people how to do it. And really what I'm hearing too, is that I know it's a cliche, but it's cliche for reasons. Like, you know, you catch a fish, you know, you catch a man, (laughs) eat one meal, eat the man to fish, eats the rest of his life. That's it. That's it. I just want to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. Yeah. That's my vision is to, you know, have all these magical people all over the world. (laughs) We're all (laughs) partying and enjoying ourselves in our cool magic. I, you know, I enjoy going, like, uh, I was at the airport last night. I enjoy going to the airport and being the only one like this, but I would also love it if there's a bunch of people (laughs) walking to the airport and they're full magical selves. (laughs) I, I don't know how you walk through security. Like, what do the security people do? It's like, funny. It's a process. You know, hackster? Is that what they uh, Yeah, do? yeah. I, luckily, because I travel a lot, I got the TSA pre-clearance thing, so that helps a bit. But yeah, I have to take the hat off. Uh, the dragon comes off. You can't see here, but I've got a bunch of belt pouches. So, you know, I, I know to go early and just give myself space and time. Yeah. And, you know, I'm unloading all these pouches and, you know, definitely getting looks. Uh, but usually I get some compliments. I mean, the lady last night after I went through the metal detector, she's like, are you from Renfair? And I love Renfairs. And what are you doing? Like, I, I passed out cards to security people before. <laughs> so usually I get, you know, some looks. And then there's usually some people that are excited about it. And uh, it's a fun process. And, you know, I think it just kind of, you know, the general energy there, right? It's like, okay, I got to get through this and I got to get there and I got to get to my plane and and I'm just taking my time unloading pouches and dragons and magical hats and oh do you need me to take my cloak off okay let me take my cloak off so I just really <laughs> just go for it and have fun with it it's like part of the adventure like okay I'm the wizard at the airport what is this like um, yeah, I've got some fun videos of me like, all right, I'm about to get into the metallic dragon. I can't fly on my dragon here. So I'm just going to climb into the belly of one of these beasts here and <laughs> see if they have wizard class. I don't know. You know, so <laughs> I just have a good but it time. It might be it. a special thing in the front. Like it's, mm. it's right before first class. You just need to know where it is. Right. Yeah. There's a secret door. You gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> So I think this is actually a perfect moment to, I'm going to give you the stage and I do not know what magical thing you're going to guide us into, but I know it's going to be amazing. I'm yeah. very excited. Mm, thank you so much. Thank you for this. Okay, let mm. me move pen. You are center stage. All right. All right. I invite everyone. If you can, if you're in a safe space to close your eyes and get comfortable. Lindra Tura. I'm going to, as I was doing before, move between English and a couple of these other realms wanting to come through to support you. So as I speak them, uh, just let them flow through you like you're listening to beautiful, you know, forest, bird song, ocean song, just letting that those elements move through you. They're here to support and open up the energy systems and your connections to these realms. So sit back, drop into your breath, allow your breath to deepen and soften. Letting the body relax. Letting the body connect in to the cushions that are holding you. And from there, your body, with your intention, your will, your inner direction, move down into the earth. And connect in, plug in to the earth as we open the heart of the earth to come up and infuse your body with her life force to support your body and allow your body to receive this nourishment like a tree drawing up life force drawing up minerals and energy from the earth to both ground you, but to also help your body open up to receive more of these realms, more of your magic. Feel the earth itself. She's inviting 
your avatar to come forward into this world, allowing, softening, opening, relaxing as best as you can. And begin to breathe with the earth, like you are syncing up in your body with the rhythms of the planet. And as you continue to synergize just with your intention as best as you can, it's going to be unique for each of you. So just allowing your own sensations, visualizations, feelings to unfold. We begin to create a sanctuary around you. Infusing the elements of earth, air, fire, and water. We call forth the landscapes of the earth. The mountains and the trees and the oceans and the lakes and the rivers of Atakaira. To surround you and support you and welcome you. But and the elementals of the earth, the dragons of the earth to surround you. But and maybe you can feel them or see them. They're coming in to support you. And we're also gonna invite in the all the mythos, all the mythologies of the world that we've been talking about to surround you, the concepts, the frameworks to surround you, but all the gods and goddesses, all the heroes and the figures and the stories and the legends, ones that you are aware of and ones maybe you don't know, just letting this whole <laughs> stadium of these mythic forms surround you. And they're actually creating space around you. And they are opening to receive you. They are bowing in honor and respect for the mythos for the mythology, for the divinity, for the magic within you that you are allowing to now emerge today. Gera, allowing your heart to soften and open as best as you can. And taking a deep breath, we're now going to open a portal, imagining a vortex of energy opening from your heart, moving up and out above you. As we unravel and let go for a moment, this time space dimension of the human experience. And we're gonna to begin to invite in the essence of your avatar, the essence of your infinite magic. Your mythos from above and beyond this world. Now is the time. Now is the opportunity. Now is the gift that you've been waiting for. To receive yourself, your own mythos, your own operating system, your own guidebook. And for each of you, it's going to be different. Each of you, so much is going to come through right now in this moment as we just begin to open this portal, this doorway for you. And seeing again all these beings all these forms, all these mythos around supporting and welcoming, inviting that to flow into you. And breathing that in. Even if it's abstract right now, just allowing this essence to start to flow in or opening to receive uh, maybe just an appetizer of your true avatar starting to come in. And you may feel, you may see elements, symbols, energies, just noticing. We're opening new possibilities here for life, for your life, for how you live and how you show up. For more of your life force, your magic, your gift, your truth, 
your fulfillment to arise within you. And the earth itself is beckoning and inviting that in to your body, letting it drip into your body slowly like honey nectar pouring down into your body. That is a safe and time for you to emerge. to allow this essence to begin to flow through your body and pour out of you, radiating. Hear the realms through my voice, feel them through my voice. Inviting you for Tine Takaedro to Ushwet in a Takara Bayat Unik Eir Kukarako as you level up and restore yourself to be here fully now in this world. Let it flow in your heart, let it fill all those spaces in you that have felt disconnected that have felt lacking, that have felt fulfilled, unfulfilled. Let it fill all those places within you, this essence of who you are. And know that there's even more coming for you, coming into you, that you've opened the gate to yourself. And all the realms are so proud of you, love you so much, and are honored and excited to witness your adventure in this wondrous realm of Earth. Take a few deep breaths. Feel the earth holding you, stabilizing you and fortifying you. Feel the stones and the bones of the earth holding you, grounding you. The trees aiding you. and all the realms aiding you. Hmm. And as you're already taking your time, as you begin to move your body, Access it as if you were exploring your body for the first time as your avatar, a new birth. How does your avatar, this essence, move it in your body? We move our body as an expression of the energy within us, right? So we've just opened up a new level of energy within you. Let that express itself through how you move. Let your avatar see anew, taste anew, smell anew, express anew. Yeah. 
You've just stepped into a field of new possibilities. As we all get to create a new mythos for this beautiful planet and for this beautiful expression known as the human race. Mm -hmm. And your contribution, your magic, your essence matters, is important in your own unique way that you get to discover and explore. And I'm honored to get to be here with you on this adventure. I come back? Yeah, welcome <laughs> back. <laughs> this is my time. <laughs> Pass it back to you. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this. I was like, this is either a long dramatic pause or this is about you. <laughs> Both. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. That was so powerful. Oh my god, I really love that. You're welcome. Love to see all the little shares in the in the chat here popping up thank you all yes amazing 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 thank you the chat i've like so the chat is so big at this point i'm like what's happening right it's hard to track <laughs> i'm so I'm, I'm at the point where someone said they were crying before I'm like, uh, God. Uh, <laughs> okay i don't know what's that okay okay i can't i can't find it but like that's right. But the bottom line is everyone is really moved and I can just speak uh, to my own experience. I was very moved mm. and uh, it's interesting because I did a closing activation yesterday for day two. And the being that really wanted presence was like, uh, was uh, Guinevere. And it was mm. so funny because I usually work with Merlin mm. and it's like Guinevere's like, uh, coming through. I'm like, wait, Guinevere, what? Like I never worked with you. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, okay, no, but I'm trusting. I'm, I'm, I'm open to receive you. And it was interesting. So the activation I really brought through yesterday at the end of the day was for this enchanted fairy heart, you know, mm. to really see this enchanted love. Mm. on the planet. Yes. And it was interesting. So then when you were like asking us to like, really see like, what is the avatar? Yeah. Um, I kind of was thinking of the Guinevere activation as like an isolated thing. Like, Oh, I did that yesterday. That was uh -huh. nice. Yeah. And, you know, and then it was like, and I was just like seeing Guinevere and I can, I can speak to this because for me in my life, I think the, the archetypal energy I usually connect with is like the warrior queen. I don't mm. know if you can see that. I have yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> <laughs> and it was and it was like this moment where it's like you don't always have to be that mm -hmm. it's like, it was the sense of like you can be the fairy queen mm -hmm. yeah that was a very different frequency nice like the fairy queen is more of this enchant and you said like what does it feel like in your body and i'm someone uh i don't know if you can tell i'm someone who's moving a lot i tend mm -hmm. to move and when it was like what does it feel like in your body it was like oh my god i'm being still what <laughs> 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 and so there is like this grace there's this sense of grace and mm -hmm. i had this uh, yes i had this uh visceral taste of actually mead and then i was like well of course like you're here <laughs> <laughs> the meat <laughs> flows from me <laughs> here but it was like i think that it was representative more of the richness of life yeah it was yeah. like this experience of life as enchanted mm -hmm. this of life the enchantment of life in every day and being that enchantment that's it well done <laughs> yeah so i wanted to say like uh, you brought me there <laughs> perfect <laughs> that's it so um i know so you got in a taste of aaron's magic mm. um i know that your free gift like we've We've talked about it like almost the whole time, but I <laughs> formally like, you know, um, it is like, so when people sign up, like for these inner realms journeys, like, is it just one meditation or do they start like on the quest? Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you go to the inner realms journey site, um, you sign up and you'll get the free access to the first three meditations and that's about 35 minutes. 
And that's going to take you through the avatar process um, and deeper than we did today, right? This just kind of opened the gate. So you guys have a, um, an extra boost <laughs> compared to <laughs> a random person going in there for the first time. You got the extra boost live today. Um, so it should be a little bit even easier process for you, but it'll take you in there to connect your avatar and really begin to clarify that, right? And define that. And there's, there's some instructions in there. There's inspiration in there. And that will really crystallize that because that's a, a powerful thing. Like you were starting to see the fairy queen, right? The more you can clarify that in your imagination, the easier it is to connect with it and then embody it and bring it to life, right? And then it's really like lots of people share some magical stories, how that starts to uh, transform things or things happen that align with the avatar. Once the avatar is clear, then your reality will start to align to it, right? Because you're shifting your story back to that. Uh, and then after that, if you continue on, you'll create your sanctuary, which is the home realm of your avatar, right? Where's your avatar from and what does that home look like, which is a very powerful um, connection to have and be able to go there regularly. I go to my magical elven wizard tower all the time, right? That's my home realm on the tree of life. And then from there, you can, you'll can you start to explore the other realms and each realm is its own journey that you can do. And there's, uh, I think there's about 60 in there and I've got a huge long list I'll be doing, making for a while, <laughs> bringing these through for people. I feel you'll be creating them infinitely. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, my um, my support team is, has put your free gift in the chat. Okay, so perfect. everybody here um, who's live on Zoom, you can get that now. Anyone watching on YouTube, I'm going to send that out later and also going to put it beneath the YouTube video. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Aaron, thank you so much. This has been like off the charts. I knew this would be off the charts magical. Um, so I just feel guided uh, to ask, are there any closing uh, thoughts, any final words you'd like to share with the audience? Sure, sure. Yeah, and go up. Uh, so the, we'll work with the Inner Realms journey. That's that whole system. You can also go to the elvenwizard.com and that's where you'll see uh, all my stuff if you want to work one-on-one -on -one or other classes and things I've got going on. And my invitation here is to <laughs> discover your mythos, discover your magic internally, right? Let that really become rich within you and then let that pour out of you into the world, right? This inside is the cauldron, if you will, <laughs> of your magic, right? And it's got to come from within. You know, for many years, I was disenchanted with the world. I was like, why is this world not magical? <laughs> Where's the magic at, right? And then there's more of them we're coming on. But I realized like, oh, I get to create it. We get to create it because there's been that anti-magic, that suppressed magic. We now have the blessed opportunity, the adventure to how can we create magic anew? And we have all these new tools and resources. How can we, what, what does magic look like for us? And how can we create that in the world? So I know it can get despairing to like, oh, there's not magic or it's not magical. But now, lose as an opportunity. We get to create the magic. We get to create what that magic looks like, how that works, how we're going to live it in the world, right? So, I like for example, I'm disenchanted. Oh, there's no magic at the airport. Well, cool. I get to show up, and I get to be the, one of the first ones to start creating some magic at the airport, right? How awesome is that? So, look at that in your life, wherever you're at, your community. I know we're all in different places. How can you start bringing forth your magic? You are there for a specific reason to bring forth your magic into your community, into your world. And I know it can be challenging in areas, but I encourage you to keep opening up and exploring and watch the magic unfold, allow the magic to unfold around you. And uh, it's going to be amazing. I feel like to also to be the magic. Be the magic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say be, be, uh, be the magic you want to see in the world or uh, be magic AF uh, as fairies. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. That is a, Perfect note to end on. Erin, thank you so much for your presence here today. You you brought such incredible magic to this space. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, I think there, I, fi I think I finally got down to chat. I was like, I've uh, someone wrote, this has been so expansive for me. It was like a joy to be part of this. Like, and so I'm just telling yeah, you yeah. that like, you have really, I'm just so grateful to the mat. There's like over 850 people signed up for this. Oh, amazing. I know that. So when you said like, you know, I'm here to just bring that magic and like <sighs> spread it far and wide. It's like, you are like living your dharma. Mm. You are the living magic. And I'm mm. so grateful. Like you're my last speaker for this event. So oh, I, I couldn't have had a perfect in honor. <laughs> I want to uh, drop, can I drop two little of my mantras for everybody? Yeah. Um, so one is you can customize your own version, but, uh, and this goes back to what you said earlier, uh, how much wizard 
can a wizard doth wizard if a wizard doth wizard everywhere a wizard doth wizard <laughs> <laughs> so that's my infinite loop of wizarding and magic that quickly? that's the real question it was like what's that like, like, can you say that quickly because yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> the seashells, seashells. I can't do that again. Right. I got it's it's a slow spell to get it oh, out. Okay. Uh, and my other one is uh, my other mantra is everything is going wildly better than planned. Mm. I love that. I think like I just want to end by saying like one of the things that we've been talking about for the last three days is really bringing this new earth like to. I feel like this is the moment. And I also had something come through me uh, yesterday. It's like the sun is rising, and I also it's funny. I I think my favorite part in the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy is like the end of the second film when all of a sudden it's like wait the sun is rising. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> moment yes and so i really like i have received that message so strongly it was funny because at first literally it was yesterday morning when one of my speakers was talking about the chaos in the world and like my guides were like look outside look outside I'm like, Wait, no, but i'm focusing on my speaker and it's like, it was like the sun is oh, rising right. and i heard this reverberating through me mm. and so i just feel like we are here seeing the new earth thank you That's for good. bringing that forth that it's going to be wildly more amazing and we, that's it <laughs> don't let all the other stuff confuse you it's going to be wildly amazing <laughs> and magical and so amazing and so great to be here with you all thank you all so much for being here and sharing and, and joining in this magic and uh thank you for creating this this beautiful portal this beautiful summit for us all to share and connect <laughs>